My name is Christopher Saunders, and this is the Connecticut Sports Talent Show, where we talk all things talents in Connecticut. And on tonight's show, I'm pleased to have a returning guest who I had him on before the season started, and I felt, you know, I feel like every single week he's just breaking records left and right. His team right now is in the top five as far as class double L for Staples. Uh, wide receiver talent, uh, Tyler Clark, who also will be playing lacrosse at Army as soon upon he graduates. But who knows? Maybe football, who knows? Maybe future, maybe not. Who knows? But either way, it doesn't matter. You know, Tyler, thanks for coming on, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me again. Um, had a great time last time. and Just glad to be back. So it hasn't been too, too long since the last time that you've been on here, the first time for you. Now this is your second time. Um, I remember discussing with you about just kind of the team that was coming back. I know you were telling me how you just felt like there was something different about the group that you have and maybe a different kind of uh, energy. Uh, heading into the first game, you were telling me how there were a lot of people at the stadium uh, everybody was just excited to have Staples football back. Um, just kind of take me into that. Um, yeah, I think, well, a lot of it is building off of last season. We, we were, you know, solid seven and three. It's not our standard to not make the playoffs, but um, people were, you know, starting to realize, was, okay, Staples, you know, all right, they're pretty good. Um, let me come in, want to know at home, first game of the year, get a big win. Um, you know, there's a lot of hype around us because we won, you know, we'd be countered by, you know, a good amount. Um, and everyone's just really excited, you know, uh, and then we take a loss to St. Joe's. People are like, oh, you know, what's going on with the team? Um, and then, you know, ever since then, we've just been going super hard. Um, I, I don't know, what is it, four or five straight wins since that game. Um, and everything's just been positive for us the past four or five weeks. Um, you know, big, big win against Trumbull. Um, so everything's you know, going in the positive direction. And I think it's, it's built, it's a buildup of, uh, you know, just excitement around the program and, and everything, you know, we're getting the publicity for the first time in a, probably five or six years. So it's, it's good. Now you mentioned as far as the win streak, since the loss to St. Joe's, it's now four games. You're trying to make it five games with your game coming up. Um, the St. Joe's game by, you know, it wasn't a blowout by any means. I mean, it was a high scoring game, very competitive. I know for a time it was very close and then St. Joe's pulled away. Um, after that game, what was it as far as when you guys, you know, after the game was over, what was the conversations like? Did you feel like, you know what, we're, you know, we're there, we're close. What was that like? Yeah, exactly. I think, you know, everyone going into this year, we knew the potential we had as a team, but, um, you know, and, and we beat. Connor week one I, I think we all kind of felt you know we, we were there and then you go in lose to St. Joe's we really wanted that game but you, you got you can't just want it on the Saturday of the game you, you got to want it the five days before in practice so we kind of just reevaluated how we were practicing um, and then brought it you know we had a full team meeting after um, just an emotional meeting a lot of the seniors speaking up and and just coming together not letting a loss divide us coming back together um, and being better for it. Now, a question I have, and I've, I've asked this to a lot of coaches, and they prefer to play on Fridays because obviously routine oriented and whatnot. And I remember I did a game a couple of weeks ago, right before the NVL had their bye week. It was Holy Cross and Naugatuck. And I remember both coaches telling me, we don't like coaching games on Thursdays or Saturdays because it just gets off, you know, our routine, either too much film time, not enough film time, et cetera. Now you guys played on Saturday. And again, I'm not going to say that, oh, you playing on Saturday was the reason why maybe it didn't go your way. But did you feel like maybe it was just kind of out of your your guys' routine a little bit playing on that Saturday? Um, I mean, definitely not the, the reason we lost the game. Um, but I, I would say Saturdays are a little bit weird. You know, like it was the second week, so it's still pretty hot out. Um, I mean, it's hot right now, but it was really hot then. Um, and then I, I guess just like having an extra day of practice, it's just, it's just weird. It, it, you know, you get into this routine of like a Friday, you know, Thursday walk through Friday game, and then just it, everything is just kind of mixed up. It, it does feel a little bit weird, but um, we can't, you know, use that as a reason we lost the game. I mean, the state, sem state semifinals, I know are on a Sunday. Um, state championship is on a Saturday too. So you, you really can't make those excuses. No. And especially too, you guys are competing with college football and NFL and you know what? your games are way more important, a lot more fun to be able to watch, I would say, yeah. you know, but, you know, specifically about yourself, uh, Tyler, as you know, the season has gone on, obviously you're, you're putting up numbers. I mean, I, I mentioned, I think right before we started every single week since, uh, you know, your Twitter handle for Staples football has been tagging me. I've seen, 
you putting up numbers. I mean, I'm being a little bit high here, but I feel like it's like 500 yards every game, a couple tubs every game. I mean, do you realize what you're doing as far as offensively putting the numbers up that you are? Uh, I mean, yeah, I think it's like, it's, it's cool. Um, that first week I saw my stats, I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. Um, but then, you know, I had, I had a pretty good game against St. Joe's and we didn't win. So it, it, it just doesn't really like, it, it's, it's cool, but I, I wouldn't say it's really what I'm looking for. I really just want to win a state championship this year. Now, because of the numbers that you've been putting up, have you noticed, and, and maybe it was happening in the first game, so if it was, I apologize, but have you been noticing more attention towards you, maybe maybe double covered, maybe somebody spying you mainly on the defensive side? Have you been noticing that? Yeah, I th- I, after the first game, I, I noticed it. Um, we played St. Joe's. I, I had like a, a linebacker over me and then a safety about, you know, 10 yards off the ball. Um, and then I've noticed it in a, in a bunch of games. Just I think the linebackers are a little bit more aware of where I am. Um, and then, you know, in, uh, we played Danbury. And I think me and James Hillhouse, we were both being pressed man at the line. And then they had a safety above, just right above us, just watching where we were. Um, I, I think I've noticed it, um, but it, our coaches prepare us really well for stuff like that. And I'm, I feel like I'm prepared every week for what I see. How have you been able to, and obviously you've been handling it well because you're still putting up numbers, but did it take some time to adjusting to that kind of being the main target that defenses are looking at? Uh, I don't know. Like I think teams can't fully do it. They can't really double me the entire game like I got doubled a little bit against St. Joe's towards the end of the game but they, they can't really do it the whole game just because of how many threats we have on offense um, and I, w- I, I would love to be double teamed and have my other teammates go off for you know 400 yards um, yeah I, it's a little bit harder definitely but you, you just if there's if there's two guys on me there's one less guy on the other receivers so And you talk about the offense, too, for which the team, you know, staples is putting up points. I think I counted maybe, I think it was, what, four games with 35-plus points, something like that. The last two games, I I looked at it correctly, 42-42 and then 36-37. I mean, that's – and then obviously 41 against Connor. Your lowest scoring game was against St. Joe's in the loss. But the scores that you're putting up, you're not – I mean, teams – not every team at this level is putting up points like that. So do you guys feel like this is not like, okay, a one-time thing. This is like the norm now putting up like big 12 kind of numbers. Yeah, I definitely like we, that St. Joe's game, it just kind of felt weird, but we weren't scoring as much as we, as we have been. Um, I think this, it's just a standard that we have now is just go out. We want to score on every drive. Our goal every game is not to, like, we don't want to punt like punting just feels weird. It sucks. We don't personally, like when we punt, I just, it almost feels like a loss. Really? So let's say, for example, three and out, and you guys are punting. Are are you guys going back, you know, on the sideline, or if you have to go back and go into the punt coverage formation and all that, do you guys have to, like, are you guys angry? Or, like, talk to me about that. Uh, Honestly, our sidelines are very composed, I think. Um, We're not really getting angry on the sideline. We have the whole, like, TV and the iPad set up. So every time we come back, our wide, uh, wide receiver coach, Coach Maddie's over there. Um, we get the iPads, what went wrong, and how are we going to fix it on every drive? So I think that's actually been a huge help for us this year, just being able to see right after a drive what what happened on that drive. Wait, you said you guys have a TV on the sideline? Yeah, well, I, I, a lot of the FCAC teams are having that now. So I think I, – I know Greenwich has it, St. Joe's, yeah. Crumble – um Stanford had it I don't know about Danbury but you know a lot of teams are actually having it now and this is our first year with it so and I again I I don't see that in the NVL maybe it's you know a little bit you know before the times they're trying to catch up to that maybe it's money as well who knows but what is the reasoning for having again I apologize if this is a dumb question what is the reason for having the TV um well so with the with the TVs you can just everyone can be watching it at one time. So we have the O-line and then the receivers um, and everyone's just, you know, either the O-line gets the TV for one drive mm-hmm. or the receivers get the TV for one drive. And then we, you know, we have the iPads too. So you pass around the iPads and if a coach wants to go one-on-one with someone, they'll use the iPad and show them one thing. 
how tempting is it to see if there's actual like a channel on there just to see how tempting is it oh it, it's it's like a i think it's like an airplay system but i will say it's tempting to be watching the game you know turning over your head see what's going on on defense oh no i believe it but i would hope i would hope if they're showing if you guys are doing something wrong they'll also play back if let's say you guys had a nice drive and you yeah. guys can go back and watch that exactly. right exactly yep okay that's good at least they at least they play both sides they do the good yeah. and the bad not just the bad yeah that's mm -hmm. good so the last couple of weeks obviously i think what well, this last week um you, you broke some records correct oh uh, yeah yeah mm -hmm. so did you realize during the game that you were breaking records or no no i i, I didn't um yeah i i never like it's for something you know i'll know if i have a lot of yards in a game but receptions are kind of weird because you just you know you're into the game you don't really think about it like you just get a catch and i don't really think about it mm -hmm. um so this this past week i i broke the like receptions in a game record and i just i, I had no idea how many receptions i had um, so it was kind of cool to find out the next day. And, you know, I've, I've mentioned this to athletes before who I've had on that really didn't know they were making history, really breaking records until after. And it's a shame because you can't really enjoy the moment because, A, you don't know, or, two, someone tells you, but you're so in game mode, mm -hmm. regardless if the game is in hand, out of hand, whatever, doesn't matter. Yeah. You're just focusing on winning. Then, you know, you can reflect. Were you able to at all reflect or enjoy it a little bit during the game or no? No, I, I honestly had no idea. Um, yeah, I just didn't know. So I'm, I'm assuming after the game you got to enjoy it a little bit, no? Something? Oh, yeah, it, it brought a smile to my face for sure when I found out. Um, but, again, it's just I, I think a lot of it is just the, the new offense that we have we were passing the ball a lot more. So mm -hmm. I think there's definitely been a lot of receivers that are, you know, as good or definitely better than me that have come through the program. It's just the system and the coaching. And for what you guys have been able to do, you're in the top five right now in double L, which is like, I feel like I mentioned this to you before when I had you on for the first time, whoever comes out of class double L, just like even class L is going to have a, you know, a black and blue eye, some loose teeth, probably a broken shoulder because it's going to be a dog fight to the end. And you guys are in the top five, you know, top five right now. You're five and one tied with Glastonbury. You're just ahead because of the power points. Um, if Staples is to get to the playoffs, from what you told me, it'll be the first time since 2016. That's a long time. Uh, what's the energy been like is now the weeks have gone on and you guys are getting these wins and it's becoming now a potential reality of getting to the playoffs. Yeah, I think it's, um, you know, it's kind of cliche, but like we, you just got to take it one week at a time. You can't really overlook any teams. Like last year, we overlooked a, uh, a Dan like we, we overlooked a couple of teams and Danbury specifically, they almost, you know, they came in, played a really good game. We weren't really prepared for them um, and they almost beat us. And, you, you know, you just can't, you, we've learned from our lessons. You really can't look, you know, in, into the future. Um, yeah. Now, looking at that Danbury game, you won 42-21. And I don't know if you realize, but when you lost to St. Joe's, it was 42-21. Mm -hmm. That's, that's kind of cool. Not like because you lost, but, you know, just because of the score. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So, but that, I think that's a great attitude for you and the team to not look far ahead because the teams you play are very, very good. Regardless, FCAC, and I know you play Connor, who's in the CCC. Yeah. Regardless teams you guys have a target on your back how do you guys handle that uh I, I really just don't think we think about it we we're the kind of, you know type of team where like we're, we're not looking at rankings we're not I mean we, we look at it but you, I mean everyone sees it um but like you, you just you got to focus on yourself every day focus on yourself focus on your teammates mm -hmm. um and just like enjoy, enjoy the moment enjoy being at practice um and just get better every day it's it's that's really it you mentioned the rankings. Are, do you guys ever look at game time to see who voted for you and where you guys might be? Yeah, I mean, I won't lie and say that I don't look at it. Um, you know, at the beginning of the year, we weren't even on it. So mm -hmm. that, was, that was definitely a little bit of motivation. We're kind of close to being in the top 10 now. I think we're like 12 or something. Um, yeah, I, I, we, we use it a little bit as motivation, but like you can't let that define you and you can't you can't be playing out of – you know, hate for the game time rankings or trying mm -hmm. to prove something, which I mean, you, know, you can try and prove something every week, but we really just try and play for each other. Just, you know, 
do your job for the person next to you. The fact that you guys are in the top 10 baffles me. And I've been wondering that the last couple of weeks. I, I don't get, again, that's just me. I don't have a vote. I wish I voted, but to not see you guys there, it, it kind of makes me wonder who's like, what's going on here. That's just I, my opinion. Yeah. I know where I would, I, I don't know. I, I would, I would vote differently if, if I had a vote. Well, you know what? Thing. It's good for you guys that you guys aren't in the top 10, because then it's like, I know you said you don't care about the rankings. You just move on forward. It doesn't matter, but you got to admit there's some motivation. It's like, Hey, we just got to now prove a little bit more, make sure we show it on the field. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I guess it's just, it's how it is when you don't make playoffs for five years and we all kind of expect that, but you know, we're just, we're just doing everything, everything we can every day. We'll be there by the end of the year. Um, if we keep, keep up with our preparation. And you guys have been doing that. And, you know, between you and the team, it's been great to be able to see the growth and not even just growth, but seeing the success that Staples is having this season. I know last year, like you said, seven and three didn't make the playoffs, but still showed a lot of signs. Uh, Tyler, I really appreciate you coming on. Always a lot of fun having you on. Uh, congratulations on not just the record breaking, but also the team success. And hopefully you guys can get to that finish line, make some history as far as the team is concerned. And then just keep pulling down those doors because future is bright for the team. Definitely. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. No problem. Anytime, ma'am. The wrap things up here in the Connecticut Sports Talent Show. So until next time, stay safe. Mercy T stands for Connecticut Talent. I'm your journey. Find them all. Enjoy their shit, everybody, and be well.